Hey, what's up guys? Tugi here, back again with another episode of my Seattle Mariners Franchise Mode Series, right here on MLB The Show 19. First and foremost, I do want to apologize. Slipped up on the uploads in the past few days. I'm going to mention this at the beginning of every video that goes up today. And unfortunately, I don't really have a good excuse. Madden 20 dropped, streamed the hell out of it, streamed for way too long over the past couple of nights, and that cost me the time that I would normally record videos with. But we were, we were doing well on Twitch and having a lot of fun with the Miami Dolphins run. And yes, to answer your follow-up question, there will be uh, Madden, of course, on the YouTube side of things as well. I do like to rotate some things out, as well as with the NHL stuff. There is another NHL series coming. Um, I mentioned this on Twitter. I didn't really mention this after the fact, but as far as NHL is concerned... Um, unfortunately, I noticed a lot of low top six forwards, low top four defensemen getting dropped to free agency. So I'm having to rework some potentials and going back through teams to try and prevent that from happening. So it, it's taken a little bit longer than I would have thought. I will be uh, doing a second roster update video once that's over and done with. All of the changes, of course, are being documented on the editing doc that you can find in the link uh, or that you can find in the description. The link to that. Is in the description of the most recent roster editing video. With that, I think we're good. Let's get down to business here with the Mariners. We are currently 10 games over 500, seven and a half back of the Angels and Strohs, and just a half a game back in the wild card, although the Rays have that game at hand. In the last episode, we did make at least one change, of course, with the talent that we have coming into the team. Once players are major league level, a lot of times, yeah, they don't have the most, you know, they don't have a ton of leeway to prove themselves. Obviously, some guys will be sent back down, but then you had someone like Pedro Rodriguez where it's just, it was a couple of seasons of it being fairly evident that it wasn't going to happen. The same thing for Miguel Amaya in the last episode. Antonio Mercado could have, could have been given a little bit more time. But we did bolster up the starting rotation with the acquisition of Brendan McKay. In theory, though, while it might be a good idea to improve the bullpen... We're going to hold off, and we're going to trust who is there to see if they can get us to the postseason. Now, it's tough because normally when you're in this situation of being on the fringe and thinking, okay, we might not be able to win with this team, oftentimes it can be for the best to move on from someone like Edwin Diaz, who's now 32 years old. Jose Barrios, I love him. He's now 31. Regression's going to kick in within a season or two. So we have to be a little bit worried. But on paper, this team is playoff caliber. Despite mixing around some team or some players on the team, we're looking pretty good. And this is the lineup that we're going to move forward with. Gabe Littles being moved up to lead off. James Field, of course, that major acquisition for the Giants. And then Cody Bellinger, where, you know, how much more how much more time does he have with this team? I don't know, but I think for now we're going to stick with it and see what happens. For the record, Bellinger, Voorhees, and Little all expect to be played as stars. So I worked around the lineup a little bit to factor in player morale. But you look at the addition of someone like Tom Heinlein. Yes, there are players that I'm worried about. Julio Rodriguez, whether or not he's good enough at this point. And obviously the minors are stacked with some top talents. But for now, I think we're going to keep it as is. We'll be patient. We'll give the team as it stands a chance. I hope that we ultimately make the playoffs in this episode. And if we do, it will be a playoff episode, even if it's just the wild card game. So let's go ahead and sim past that game against the Angels. It's a huge 10 to 1 victory. And again, try to have the positive outlook to it as we end up sweeping the Angels over those three games. That certainly helps with the positivity. Being back in the playoffs would be nice. We want to start making a little bit of an impact once we're in the postseason. That has not exactly happened yet, as we are undefeated so far in this episode, beating San Francisco twice. We have three games against Tampa, as Ray Mitra is back from injury, and we are going to have to fix the roster as a result. Mitra's missed the majority of the season. Actually, he hasn't. 237 at-bats. Who was I thinking of that missed a decent amount of time? Maybe I'm thinking of something from last year. Unfortunately, uh, it's going to have to be Christopher Nance who gets sent down. We called him up for the moment, and we'll drop uh, Khan down to double A. Now, Mitra in the lineup 
is something I'm unsure of. I'm trying to get Warner Sylvester, Warner Sylvester, easy for me to say, a few more at-bats. It did move Mitra to right to replace Rodriguez. And I'm not totally against that at the moment because Ray has done very well. He doesn't want to be played as a star player, which is fine. So I think we'll leave that as is with Ray Mitra replacing Rodriguez in the outfield. And we'll see what happens here. Hopefully we can get a win against Tampa. We cannot. We lose all three games to the, at this point, potentially the Expos. <laughs> We're far enough into the future. That could be the reality. Three games against Kansas City and Cody Bellinger. Goes down for a week or two. We do complete the sweep, though. And then four big games against Houston. I don't expect us to win the division. Wild card would be nice. But if we want a chance over the last month and a half, we need results here against the Astros, who have been a thorn in my side for this entire series and continue to be as they take three out of four. That brings us to four games against the White Sox, in which we split those games and we'll make sure that Bellinger's back where he should be and he is not so what we will do is swap the positions swap you like this and then bring Ray back into right I am gonna have to do that for every single lineup isn't that fun but like I said, I, I know too there were some comments about like, man, you know, you might be moving some people, moving on from some people too quickly. Some of them I stand by. Like I said, guys um, like Pedro, where they had had opportunities, but I didn't want to blow this up too quickly and think like, oh well, what if we had kept Bellinger? It's not the worst case scenario to keep Diaz, to keep Bellinger to the point where they're regressing because it doesn't hurt us to not get max value for them, and you never know. This game at any point in time can go in your favor. So maybe this will be a special year for us. We have three games against the brutal Texas team. We barely won that series, but we won it nonetheless. And three games against Boston, our final complete series. Actually, uh, it's not our final complete series in August. Let's see what happens here. We win that series. And we have three games against the Yankees as well. And they take that series. Final game of the month is the first of two against Chicago. That is a win. The AAA Ball Club missed the playoffs, as did the AA Ball Club. But we're at 77 and 62. Currently 12 games back of the Astros and a game out of the wild card. Two games at hand for Tampa. So the losses to the Rays earlier really didn't help us. I don't I don't know. I don't know how I feel about our chances here. I gotta be honest. We need a very strong month. Just to make the playoffs, Brendan McKay has been a little bit of a bust since we acquired him. His number's dropping. Of course, we could look at, you know, just letting him go. The pitching still isn't that bad, and obviously all the September call-ups are there. Lineup-wise, we'll have to factor in the call-ups as well. We'll stick with it. Sylvester's been brutal, though. We'll get him out of that DH situation. And I think... Well, Nance is back on the roster. Let's go back to Adrian Serrano full-time. We had been letting Sylvester hit against righties. He has that little bit of an edge as we end up losing that next game to Chicago. Four games. Oh, my God. Our next eight games are against the Angels and Astros. If we want a chance of making the playoffs, we need results right here against very tough teams. We do take three out of four against the Angels. Only two. Well, actually, that's not too bad. We split the two games against Houston. I thought we were going to lose three out of four to Houston to offset. So 82 wins on the year. I think we're on pace for our best regular season yet in this series, as depressing as that is. Three games against Cleveland. We get the wins. Two games against Oakland. We split them. And that leaves us with three games against Texas, two games against the Angels, and then four more games against a bad Texas team. We will not be winning the division. The Astros have already locked that up. But we are currently in a wild card spot, two games up on Boston. So, I mean, we control our destiny here. It's the only way to put it. The only way to put it with six games coming up. Actually, seven. That's right. It's, a, it's not a three-game series. It's a four-game series. With seven games coming up against Texas, who we should beat pretty much every time, we control our own destiny. If we miss out on the postseason here, which I'd like to think we won't, but if we miss out on the postseason here, it is... It, it would be horrifying for how good this team is on paper. We take two out of three against the Rangers. We split the two games against the Angels. Are we officially a playoff team? Still no. Two and a half up on the Red Sox. 
We all we have to do is win a game or two, and we will be fine. That's all we need. We'll be a wild card team again, but back in the postseason at the very least. We win one, we win two, that'll do it. The Mariners back in the playoffs again. Pretty much guaranteed to be taking on Houston if we are able to win the wild card game. Yikes. It's just, we have to go through Houston. That's the only way we're ever going to win, is if we can go through Houston. So this will be our fourth time in the last five years making the playoffs, the third time that we will be in the wild card game. Actually, all four times we've been in the wild card game. Let's sim these final two. We end up doing the job, getting the wins over Texas. So 92 and 70 on the year. We know that we're taking on the Angels. The winner plays Houston. Tampa plays Minnesota in the other ALDS matchup. And in the NL, it's the Mets and Nats in the wild card. The winner plays the Cubs, San Diego, and Philly in the other NLDS matchup. Let's take a look here. First and foremost, at what happened around the league. I think that's where we'll start. Starting at the top with the AL, again, the Rays win their division, the only team out of the AL East to make it. The AL Central goes to the Twins, the only team to make it out of that division as well. And then the AL West, I mean, it's just stacked. Astros, Angels, and Mariners all make it, and then you have Oakland and Texas who are so far out of it. And in the NL, you have the Phillies, Nats, and Mets all make the playoffs. The Cubs are the only team to make it from the Central. From the West, you have the Padres. In terms of, well, let's look at league leaders first and foremost, although Mackenzie Gore was phenomenal and may have won a Cy Young. It was actually a guy named Mackenzie Wallace up there in terms of batting average. The hit leader was also Wallace on Detroit. And the leader in home runs, Joey Gallo, at least in the AL. We'll check the NL here in a second. Uh, we'll swing back. CJ Durant, 34 stolen bases. James Field with 33. So again, uh, I felt kind of cheap about how we picked him up from the Giants, but uh, no room, of course, to be no room to be remorseful when it comes to this. Of course, the next series we do on this, uh, or you know, on MLB, eventually will be more of a either a straightforward rebuild or it'll be you know something like Draft of Glory or Nations United, something like that. But yeah, certainly. Not just, all right, let's just try to win, which is what you guys voted for. And again, it's so sad that despite the, okay, I have full freedom. Oh, God, that's depressing. Uh, despite the, you know, the fact that I have full freedom to do whatever I want, the fact that we still haven't even made it to a World Series at this point is pretty depressing and upsetting and sad. But damn it, we're going to get there one of these days. Is today that day? I, I don't know. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I really, really hope so. As Paddock led an ERA because of course he did. Jesus. That's depressing as always. And then for the hell of it, pitching war was Paddock in the NL and Malik Smith in batting war. Yay! That was, that was fun to look at, wasn't it? Oh god. Joey Gallo was AL MVP, okay. And L MVP was Michael Conforto. Cy Young actually went to Forrest Whitley. Jose Barrios has been upset. His 18-6 uh, and six record, but he still got it, huh? Mackenzie Wallace won the batting title, as did Malik Smith. I am depression. <laughs> That's awful. Reliever of the year, Tim Ruiz and Carl Edwards Jr. Mm-hmm. Austin Beck and Tom Heinlein, who again, we just randomly called up. as like, yeah, we'll have him as the backup first baseman. He won Rookie of the Year. Tremendous stuff, despite playing out of position at catcher, and he's not even that good of a fielder, but it worked. Hank Aaron Award the Seager and Michael Conforto. And the gold gloves, I'm not all that worried about. We'll see if we had any winners, though. James Field in left. And that's going to be about it. Silver Slugger-wise, nobody there. So, we shall see what happens. Rotation-wise, Barrios finished at 17-5 with a 2.68 ERA, a 2.16 for Mackenzie Gore, a 3.24 for Nakayama, a 4.10 for McKay, and Fukumori 
at a 402. So I mean, in terms of the in terms of the lineup, that's it right there. That's the rotation. Uh, Damon North kind of struggled, but still young enough that we can give him time. And then bullpen wise, Stephen Byer didn't get much action. Jermaine Ridley was rough when he got to play. Roberto Mesa did all right. Anthony Gonzalez was a bit meh, and then you have Guillen and Diaz. So I mean, in terms of in terms of who we're trusting here, I mean, I'm gonna move Mesa here and then Mesa down because basically it's it's gonna be the bottom options that we trust. Roberto Mesa, Miguel Guillen, and Edwin Diaz need to backstop that bullpen. They have to. Lineup wise, a lot of cold streaks right now. But Gabe Little finished with that 268 average. We'll take a look at 343 on base and a 783 OPS for the now 24 year old. James Field at 22, 833 OPS, 373 on base percentage for him. Cody Bellinger finished just shy of 100 RBIs and 868 OPS for him. Jimmy Voorhees ended the season on a hot streak. Only a 7.53 OPS, though, which is pretty disappointing. Pablo Mateo with that 8.54 OPS, a 3.60 on base, 20 home runs for him. Of course, he missed some time due to injury. Heinlein, the rookie of the year. Solid numbers across the board. Very happy with that. Luis Garcia, 7.83 OPS. Did well. I mean, didn't start or didn't begin this season as a starter, but fairly happy. And then Ray Mitra out and right, the 869 OPS. We'll probably look to want to move him up, at least over Garcia. And then Adrian Serrano, I don't know if he's going to be the DH or not. I'm not overly happy with him. The average is a bit rough, but the on base is at least okay. That is pretty much going to be the team that we roll with here. Julio might work his way back into the lineup. Maybe Siegler does. But that is pretty much how we are going to uh, advance here. So we know who it is. It is the LA Angels of Anaheim. Let's do this. I mean, we know it's Otani. We might as well look at their team, even though it's going to be a one game uh, setup, of course. And Otani is up to a 98 at this point. Bullpen wise, they're, they're pretty strong. Got to be honest. A lot of righties, but they're fairly strong in terms of overalls. Otani. Not great, though. Not great. And I find that to be the case in this game. In terms of his ability uh, from the mound, not great. His ability at the plate is typically phenomenal. And thus it is. So, it's always a weird one with him. Lineup-wise, it is Jorge Polanco, Dansby Swanson, Mike Trout at 34 years old, Christian Yelich, Seiji Ubayashi, uh, Kiner uh, Falefa, I'm probably you know, botching that. Colton Welker, Jemai Jones, and Nelly Rodriguez. The likes of Dylan Moore and Michael Hermosillo on the bench. <sighs> they have a better team than we do on paper. At least in terms of overalls, they have a better team. In terms of how it shows up, in terms of ranking, they, they have a better team. So we are up against it here. This game will determine whether or not we have yet another postseason matchup ahead of us against the Astros, or if it's going to be another offseason episode sooner rather than later. Let's find out. Jose Barrios will take the mound for us against Shohei Otani. And lineup-wise, it's a tough call. But I think the only, you know what, it's fine. I mean, Mitra and Garcia, it's such a minor swap. That's the team. Let's do it. Can we get a win? Do we have another date with the Astros? Or will this episode end in another disappointment? Let's find out, Gabe Little. Field and Bellinger with a two-out single. Voorhees strikes out to follow that up. But a nice one-two three inning there from Barrios. Lead-off single from Mateo. Heinlein strikes out. Garcia walks. That brings up Ray Mitra. Two on one outs. And he drives him home. One outs, by the way. Well, I guess that's technically... It just sounds weird. That's the second time that's happened to me today. You say something, you know it's right, but it still sounds off. The bottom line is Ray Mitra just hit a two RBI double. The Mariners have the early lead. Adrian Serrano 
And Gabe Little does strike. I was going to say Gabe Little can't capitalize either. He did. It's an RBI single for Gabe. We're up 3 to nothing. We're going to go for the steal, and we get it. Can Field knock him home? No, he cannot. But Barrios has some run support early. Yelich, Ubiashi, and Falifa. Nothing, nothing I was hoping for. <laughs> they say nothing doing there, and it's a two-out single. Welker flies out, though, and we have the 3 to nothing lead through two innings. Bellinger, Voorhees, Mateo, nothing doing there. And we'll see what Barrios can do in response. Back-to-back, 1-2-3 -back, innings. Or, you know, consecutive 1-2-3 half innings. Heinlein leads off with a leadoff single. Garcia flies out. Mitra strikes out. Serrano singles. Good opportunity for Gabe Little to deliver again. And he walks James Field. The big-time acquisition from the Giants. Can he deliver? Bases loaded. Two outs. In the top of the fourth, he cannot. He strikes out. Hopefully, we don't live to regret that. Swanson, Trout, Yelich with a two-out triple. Ubayashi strikes out, though. We're through it. Still up 3 to nothing through 4. Bellinger with a leadoff single. Voorhees singles as well. Pablo Mateo just don't ground into a double play. He flies out, but does move Bellinger over. We'll go for the steal of Voorhees. He doesn't get it. That's shocking. I'm surprised they gunned him down with Bellinger at third. Heinland flies out. It wouldn't have mattered anyway. Still up three. Playing it a little bit uh, a little bit dangerously right now. Isaiah flies out. Welker doubles. Jemai Jones strikes out. Nelly Rodriguez flies out. Barrios pitching a gem. Garcia, leadoff single. And that will do it for Otani. Ryan Castellani brought on. Garcia gets the steal. We'll play small ball here. Mitra bunts him over. Serrano gets the sack fly. We're up four to nothing. Little walks. Gets the steal as well. Field walks. Two on, two outs for Cody Bellinger. And he delivers a two RBI triple for Bellinger. It's six to nothing Seattle. What is this team that can suddenly put up runs in the postseason? Voorhees pops up. We go to the bottom of the sixth, up six to nothing. And that's going to do it for Barrios. Maybe. <sighs> we should be fine. Like, I just pray we can win this, and then that way Barrios, only half a stamina bar gone. He'll be ready to pitch in game three, two or three. So we get him two times in the series, ideally. <sighs> I'm, I'm going to take him out. And we're going to go with Mesa, and hopefully I don't live to regret it, as he walks Polanco, Swanson strikes out, Trout walks, Yelich singles, bases loaded, one out for Sheiji Ubiashi, it's a sack fly, Angels are on the board at 6-1, to one. two outs here, Falefa, oh my god, please, not like this, not like this. Walker strikes out. It's six to four through six. Counting my chickens before they hatch may end up being the title of this episode. Mateo Heinlein walks. Garcia singles, gets him to third. We'll go for the sack fly for Mitra against Connor Sadzik. Sadzik. Sack fly. Thank you. It's seven to four. We get the steal with Garcia. Serrano can't drive him home. We go to the bottom of the seventh. Jemai Jones grounds out. Rodriguez pops up. Polanco reaches on an error. Swanson into a fielder's choice. We're up 7-4 to four through 7. Little walks. Gets the steal. Play small ball. Field bunts him over. Bellinger can't get the sack fly. Voorhees is able to drive him in, though. An RBI single. We've doubled them up. It's 8-4. to four. Mateo pops up to end the half inning. We go to the bottom of the 8th. Trout grounds out. Yelich strikes out. Ubayashi walks. Kiner Falefa. Falefa. Drives in a run. RBI double. It's 8-5. Welker. Another RBI. It's a single for Welker. It's 8-6. Jones flies out. We go to the ninth. I'm sweating bullets. We're only up by two. Heinlein against Cambodrosian. Pops up. Garcia. Solo shot for Luis Garcia. We're back up by three. Mitra grounds out. 
Serrano grounds out. We will bring in the veteran, Edwin Diaz. Three outs away from securing our spot against the Astros yet again. Rodriguez with the sole shot. The lead's down to two. Polanco strikes out. Swanson lines out. Trout is up. They're down to their final outs. Are the Mariners going back to the ALDS to take on the Houston Astros? It's a single for Trout. Yelich is the tying run. And thank God. <laughs> thank God. The Mariners move on. I nearly cost us the game. <clears throat> oh my God. I nearly cost us the game by taking out Barrios, who pitched the gem. But it's okay, because even if you make a mistake and it works, you accept it, you move on, and you learn from it. Luis Garcia, player of the game. Diaz the save. Barrios the gem in the win. And it's Groundhog Day, folks, because we will be playing the Houston Astros again. We simply cannot escape them no matter what we do next time astros mariners somebody help me <laughs>